and India. I think India has tremendous uh, promise in some of these areas, but it's also also at the crosshairs of tremendous danger. If you look at some very good jobs in India, they are in the context of offshore services. Lots of True. tasks that are offshore to India, where there are skilled workers with some IT knowledge and ability to use uh, the English language written and uh, spoken in an excellent way. But all of those jobs are at the crosshairs of automation with AI. No, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I think in many ways, the, the conversation here that even with my book, I, I tried to spark was how do you become creators of technology and not just, uh, you know, a talent nation. Um, I think India's future cannot be just as a talent nation, but really has to be as a tech nation where it's developing technology, where it's creating technology, much like, you know, Silicon Valley does. And uh, the, the, the idea of just being an offshore service provider will not suffice. While it's been oh. great, it has really led to the transformation of India's digital transformation journey over the last 20, 30 years. Of but course. it hasn't necessarily meant that we've built very profitable companies or that we've built companies that have serious moats around their business models like some of the big tech firms in the US do. Well, that that is part of the reason why I think just like India, many other countries are at the danger of uh, being caught unawares about these generative AI developments because they have not shown the capacity to create the highest value added sectors yet. That's a process in the same sense that it took 30 years for China to move from you know, cheap toys and the cheapest textile. Right. It's the same for India. It's going to be the same for you know, Indonesia, Pakistan, Turkey. But in the process, generative AI may completely change the international division of labor.